Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my channel, Complete Quality Review. Today's episode is going to be the detailed unboxing on the Altel Evo. And let's get right to it. And here we are. Altel Evo, we got a little bit of that Altel Orange showing that this is packed, the control is packed in here and the power cords and cables are in here. And there is the craft itself. Nice smooth set and foam here on the top. And there's the Alto Evo. And it had this little foam cut out here to kind of go in a groove to really protect it good in there. So uh, very nice packing on Alto's part. And this here around it is very firm, you know, styrofoam. Okay, let's gently pull this out. And here it is, the Altel Evo. Just a little FYI, you can see here how the props are resting on the top. Um, eventually they will leave little swipes across this nice orange finish here. I wish they did have like a little accessory or that maybe they don't even need an accessory. Maybe uh, I could find something or something to just put over really just these, the top ones, so that when I'm putting it back in this bag, I can just put something over these and not scratch that up, because that is going to happen, okay? Okay, here we go. We got the LED lights on, these are the front, on the front arms. We got a nice little uh, machined black button here, and a nice little finish here. We got our, sen our rear vision sensors in the back. They don't actually avoid, but it does notify you that um, there is obstacles behind you. And I believe maybe in some modes, it may slow it down at certain speeds or in a certain modes. And here you have some venting on the back here, some airflow to keep it cool. This little plastic tab comes off completely, so make sure you don't lose it. There's a micro USB back here, which I don't know what it does. And there is a little clear button back here. Let me get my little pen. It's a little clear button back here, and this is for pairing your controller. If you get maybe a new controller or something like that, you pair it with that little button back there. Okay. And these tabs are kind of hard to remove and they're kind of a nuisance. They're a little, one of my little cons with the Alto Evo. I wish they were at least rubber, but I guess they wanted to keep that all one finish. Okay. Here on the side, you can see it says, uh, one, unfold the front arms first and then do the rear ones. Okay. Here we have our front obstacle avoidance that actually slows it down and avoids and tends to work very well. I like this right here, this nice grill with the little chrome Altel symbol. That just looks really premium. Um, it has a nice weight to it. It says with everything on it included, battery and props, it's uh, 1.9 pounds. And it definitely has a nice weight to it. And I just love this orange finish. You're gonna be able to see it when you're flying line of sight. And then they matched it with this matte black here. And all the plastic seems nicely molded and they seem like they really paid attention to detail there. So I can definitely appreciate that. So let's put these arms out. And you're gonna notice right off the back when you roll these arms out, it is a very nice, satisfying, sorry satisfying click into place they don't pop out hard they don't snap or anything like that it's just this nice gentle click into place that feels really satisfying when you're actually folding and unfolding them um, the arms feel very very sturdy and very well made very nice quality here it seems like Alto did not miss a beat with that okay all right, so as we can see here, like I said, the venting rear sensors on the back. Over here on the side, we got some more venting to keep it cool. And we have more vents behind, right here where my finger is, behind the gimbal. And then it looks like we have this little design here for the airflow. There's the ultrasonic sensors and the optical flow sensors for the hover precision. Here we got some more venting on the side. And along with that, we have another plastic tab where, okay, and this one actually stays on. And this is where your SD card is. And there, it does come with a 32 gig SD card. Okay. 
And now we have the battery at the top. When you remove the battery, it's recommended by Altel to have the craft in your hand like this because it does take some pressure to push this down and pull the battery out. This is our 4300 milliamp hour battery with 30 uh, minutes of flight time. Obviously it's not cycled jet and when you're recording or flying against the wind or doing anything like that, we're gonna get less than 30 minutes for sure. And But the reason why they don't want you to do that is, is they don't want you to have the drone like this and really push that pressure on it because it's going to put pressure on your arms and you may break them or wear them and it's just better to be safe than sorry. Um, the props here are very lightweight and very sharp and very thin. So I imagine it's going to be very quiet in the air. Um, we'll see that in our flight test but they're not heavy and they're not like thick. The blade is very sharp and thin to seem like it's gonna cut through that wind very quietly. We have two red Mark 1s here for that rotation and two here for that rotation. And these are quick release. So it's saying here on this one to just push down and turn. So let's do that. Hold that motor, push down and turn. And there we go. It comes right off. And that is definitely nice for when you're out in the field and maybe you brick one or something like that. It's a lot easier to do this than screwing one off or uh, like actually having like little screws in them or having the ones where you have to twist them off and screw. So that's really cool and handy. And to put them back on, you just match them up with these grooves here. See these and they go right back in and you push down hold that motor and turn it to the right and it's back on just like that so you have like a little two tabs here to push on and you want to pull from your right first so you go in like this and you pull that out gently and there is your camera 4k 60 frames per second 94 degree field of view and now for the controller and the power cables, okay? Okay. So, hold this here and open it up. Ah, and as you can see, that's packed very nicely. We've got the hard styrofoam here, and we're just gonna pull that out the middle, like that. that and put that back into the box there and there is the controller and it is very beautiful there is normally plastic across the whole controller and there's like two like a little circular plastic piece of tape that holds the two antennas together the antennas don't clip into place here is your phone holder maybe a small tablet but I don't know I would just say phone to be safe in a large phone like my note non fits in here no problem and um if you do want to hold a tablet or something like that they do there are companies that make aftermarket ones of these that actually hold tablets and kind of come up a little higher and hold the whole tablet where that whole tablet's here and your hands are underneath or you could just remove it altogether if you don't want it on here um and because you can just use the screen to fly your evo and here are antennas on the back a little fye these pins here little plastic pins in here they do tend to wear after a while so be very careful with these try not to bend them try not to um you know hit them out of like bend them or twist them out of place and put wear on that plastic or you may have to send your control off the Alta to have them fix them. Another FYE, while we're on antennas, there is a company that makes uh, antenna slash range extender for Hawks. And it does replace these antennas and it's like a square shape. And it does increase the range and helps it in uh, uh, areas with like high frequency interference. Um, and you open your controller up and you hook up those four aux four hawks antennas and it does extend your range and you won't have to worry about breaking your pins but it does void the warranty i believe um, with your Altel controller i'm going to be sticking with my regular antennas for now there is a fan inside of this controller 
And as you can see, there is some venting here on the top and there is venting here on the bottom. Now, another thing you'll notice is when you open up your controller, your controller's arms, it's similar to the way these open on the drone. There's no clicking. It's a very just gentle, satisfying click into place with no noise and it just feels really nice. And these, it's like a you know nice little matte plastic, but it feels really nice, nice design, and it holds very well in the hands. And you can reach all of your buttons just fine. I feel like there is a little bit of reach to get up here to your gimbals if you're holding it like this. You'll kind of feel like your wrists flex a little bit trying to reach up there. So maybe, you know, not, I mean, it's comfortable, but you do have to, you'll feel your wrists like, you know, stretch a little bit to try to reach that gimbal. So you'll probably just have to, you know, move your hands as you're going. Okay. Here we have our USBs. Now, as you heard when I was reading off in the beginning, it doesn't seem to come with a lightning cable. So it looks like you're gonna have to use like the one that comes with your phone, which is a little annoying because this is long and you kind of just want like a on a go one at that length. But when you peel this rubber tab back, you have your big USB, which I'm assuming is for iOS, which is what we're gonna be trying out today is um, the iPhone, uh, iPhone 10s Max. And that goes in there. And then this end will go into your phone. And that's how you actually connect your phone. You're not going to be looking for a Wi-Fi signal like other drones. And then you have your micro here. And as you see, um, or will see, it comes with uh, two micros uh, for older Android and new Android to connect. Some more venting here at the bottom. Like I said, it does have a fan. We have our home button, our pause button that pauses autonomous flights. And if you hold it, it should cancel it, I believe. And if you hold down home, it'll return to home. Your power button hold to turn on your controller and your um, auto take off and auto land. You'll notice the sticks here have a very nice expensive rubber to them. And it feels really nice. Like when I squeeze it like this, it has like that squishy rubber feeling that kind of goes in with your finger. So like when you push, the rubber kind of pushes as well. And it feels really comfortable. Very high quality, very premium feeling. And here on the top, we have our gimbal. So this rolls your gimbal. It feels very accurate, has a nice little ridge ridges on it. And it feels very accurate. Like you can really be precise with your gimbal when you're moving it up and down. As you probably noticed, that is your record button. You push that to start recording video. Over here, you have your camera button. You push that to take a picture. And this wheel over here is for your menu. So you'll be scrolling through your menu to go right, scroll through your menu to go left, and it's also a button. So when you scroll over to what you want and push it, that is your confirm button. And here's your display button. It acts as your go back button when you're in your menus. So you'll like click okay and then hit back, scroll over, click okay, hit back, hit back. Also, when you click the display button, it switches between your uh, your like your telemetry or your um, FPV screen, which I'll show you. And here on the back, we have an A and B button, which do have functions. And that nice Altel orange accent that I, I just love. Very high quality. Like right off the back, when you're unboxing this drone, you just you just feel the quality, and it, it's really nice. You know, I, I'm not really into like the all matte finished drones or whatever they kind of look cheap but this really makes me feel like you know in a controller it really makes me feel like i spent you know good money and here's our power cords comes in a nice little box and this is the power cord to charge it okay. right and as you can see here this has nice quality too. I mean, most power cords are just like, eh, whatever, it's just a power cord. But Altel seems to didn't want to miss any detail. It's very nice. I mean, just just quality all around. They didn't like uh, skip off or cut, make any shortcuts in the quality department. So like every step of the way, every accessory you touch, 
you you can just see the quality they put into it. So you know that that is going to go into here. This is going to go into your wall. And right quick, this part flips back, and that is for your battery. Take that, and that clips right in there like that. And that is how you charge your battery. And then it also has a USB here, and that's where you're gonna charge your controller. Now, we have our spare props and our OTG cables. So, we have these here. So, we know this is like one set, and another one set. And here are our USBs, our micro USBs uh, for the controller. And here are our Android OTG cables. I don't know why it doesn't come with a, a lightning one. But here you go. You have your USB-C end that goes into your phone. Like I have a Note 9, so I would be using USB-C. And then your micro that goes into the controller and then micro and micro for the older Androids. So those are your OTG cables. So let's boot this up. Here's your power button on the back and you just push it and hold it until the drone comes on. So here we go. And now we're gonna do the controller, same thing, hold that power button. And you're gonna hear that beep. Okay, see some of the telemetry, we got height, distance, uh, speed, which is in kilo, kilometers or kilometers, sorry. Our gimbal degree, GPS, we got our drone battery life in green on the back and our controller on the right. And see, right here, flight remaining 26, 21 minutes and we haven't even flown it. So we can assume that we're gonna get a little, 26 minutes or less. We'll see if that increases um, after we cycle that battery a little bit. So you can just hit the display button here. You know, the drone. The drone's FPV screen. And we can move that gimbal. And then if you hit display again, it's going to go back to this, okay? So now I'm gonna show you um, some of the menu to go through. So I'm gonna hit display, and as you see here, the roller goes through the menu here. Now, if you do it too quick, it won't register, so you wanna be a little slow. So we have here, you know, our camera modes, and you had display to go back. EV, and then we come over here to settings. Okay, settings under, I guess, picture or photo. Again, this is a button, you push it in. We got photo mode, uh, single shot burst, time lapse, AB, uh, photo format, JPEG, raw, JPEG plus raw, video resolution. We got 4K plus, 4K, 2.7K, 1080p, 720. Right now it's in 4K plus. Video frame rate, 30 frames per second. But if we came here and went into 4K, we can put that at 60 frames per second. Video standard, PAL, NTSC. And then you hit back and we go over. We got novice mode, which is off. Go home altitude. We can set, adjust range. Looks like, in, like one, five, and 10. And you can go down and use your little wheel to actually increase that altitude for return to home. We got speed mode, precision, standard ludicrous mode. Ludicrous mode is when all the sensors turn off and it gets its full 45 miles per hour speed. So be careful with that. Speed limit, altitude limit. Okay, it's at 800 meters, which is pretty high. Uh, distance limit is off. We got command, command stick mode. We got 
mode one, mode two, and mode three. So mode one is saying this will make it go forward and then this will make it rotate. And then your right stick are basically, a, I guess, ascend, descend, and um, go side to side. Mode two is what we're used to, ascend, descend, are y'all left and right, and then move forward, move left, move right, move back. And then mode three is, okay, so the left stick is move forward, move left, move back, move left, and then this is your ascend, descend, and then just your y'all. So you could be pushing up with this and controlling your yaws you're going. We're gonna go in mode two, what we're used to. Vision. Visual obstacle avoidance on. The aircraft hovers automatically when, obstac when obstacles are detected. The accuracy of obstacle detection is related to obstacle size. Refer to user manual for more information. Show radar on map. When enabled, a real-time obstacle detection radar map will be displayed on the remote control screen. Then we go back and we're over here. We have language, we have units, which is in kilometers. We're gonna put that in Imperial, because I am in the US. Gimbal mode, stabilize or FPV. I imagine FPV is gonna be unstabilized. Gimbal automatic calibration. Says the aircraft is not horizontal because there's a little slant here. So we grab the aircraft and this floor is flat. And then we're gonna hit start. And it says calibrating. And that is gonna take a little bit. So we're gonna skip past that. And Let's continue going down. We got format SD card and reset camera. And that's all of the options we have while on the controller. Okay. Now let's switch to the, um, the phone. So we have a iPhone XS here, XS Max. And we're going to hit our Altel Explorer app. We're going to take our cable. I recommend getting a Lightning OTG cable if you're going to buy this drone. And then I'm going to take this end and try to get it into this little annoying tab here. Okay. There we go. You kind of got to hold that. Now that that's in there, and then you'll hear that beep and it says app connected. And then we're going to take this and insert it there, which looks great. But you see what I mean? This is way too long. So if you're gonna get this drone, definitely order yourself a shorter USB to Lightning uh, OTG cable. I don't know why it didn't come with one, especially since it says iPhone, made for iPhone all on the back, and it didn't even come with an OTG cable. So that's really weird, but I'm an Android user, so. I'm gonna hit go fly, and then we're gonna see now that it's up here. Now our options are a little different. Now we have uh, compass calibrate, flight mode. What is that? Okay, I can't click that. I am you, vision sensors. This is just the statuses. So you go through and it just says battery percentage, 30%. Um, aircraft battery, aircraft battery temperature, image transmission signal, says so strong. Gimbal status normal, SD card. Flight controls, okay. So we have novice mode here, uh, our return to home altitude that we can bring up or down. Um, our speed mode, standard precision ludicrous. That was on a controller. Speed limit, 18 kilometers. Now it seems to go back. I don't know why it's in kilometers again when I put it in metric, so that's weird. Um, it should be in, yeah, see even a controller switch back, so. Uh, kilometers when I set it for Imperial. So I don't know what's up with that. Um, distance limit, there is no distance limit. Advanced setting and side flight controls, you can just turn the front LED indicators off or turn them on, see that? Okay, we're gonna leave them on. And we got EXP here, rotation, we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna go to visual navigation. 
Visical obstacle avoidance. The aircraft hovers automatically when obstacles are detected in the forward field of view. Flight speed is limited to 36 kilometers when visual obstacle avoidance is active. The viewing angle of forward visual camera is 60 degrees horizontally and 50 degrees vertically. Obstacles beyond the scope of the visual field will not be detected. So keep that in mind. Note, visual camera will not work properly in low light conditions. The accuracy of obstacle detection is related to obstacle size. Refer to the user manual for more information. And that's your radar map that shows you. Um, where your obstacles are coming from, remote control, remote calibration, and that's just this. Beeps, and you just, and this just calibrates your controller. And you just go in each of the directions until it beeps. And then the top one's your gimbal. You just hold that to the left and then hold your gimbal to the right. And then that's done. Image transmission gives you information on that. So it's actively showing you how your transmission is. Broadband settings. Image transmission smooth or high definition or normal. We're gonna go high definition. Aircraft battery is showing you your voltage in each cell. It is a three cell battery. So it's showing you three cells here. The temperature, 30.5 degrees Celsius. And it lets you set your critically low uh, battery warnings and your low battery warning. Okay. And then you can set your time to discharge when you want the battery to start discharging and go into storage mode. Battery details. Okay, we got gimbal mode, stabilize, adjust gimbal roll axis, gimbal pitch. This gimbal pitch is how quickly you want your gimbal to move. So I got mine low, so it's like more smooth. But if you raise that number, it'll move quicker. And if you lower it, it'll move, you know, more slow for like cinematic shots. And then we have home point. You can set, you know, to me, uh, units. We're gonna change that to Imperial. So maybe now that we're doing it from the app, it'll save it. Because I did do it from the controller, but you see it switched it back. So now the controller, and this is in miles per hour, show aircraft coordinates, uh, what is it, GPS, firmware version. And it shows you the firmware version on all your flight control camera, remote control, etc. And about just that about the app. And then down here at the bottom, if you touch it, you actually can change, you know, your settings down here, like your format. I'm going to go to MP4. You can change your resolution right from here. Or you can also use your, your scroller, too. See? Use your scroller as well. You still got your OK button. And you've got your, you know, auto or manual, your camera settings down here, grid which is these, you want any of that. Center point, and set whether you want a center point. Kind of cool. Okay. Um, overexposure, overexposure warning. Oh, uh, okay, so I guess if an air is too overexposed, it'll put those lines all over it. And then when you lower your exposure rate, those lines will go away. That's cool. It's anti flicker, video encoding, reset camera for my SD card, model, volume. And then you take a, you can either record or switch over to a picture. And that was just a picture with the, with the Evo. And you can switch it like that. And then you could snap a picture. And that's going to be here. And if you want to see that picture, you just click it right there. That's right there. Okay. And then if you hit standby, that's when you go into your flight modes.
So we have camera, dynamic track, viewpoint, waypoint, orbit. And we're going to get more into that when we're out in the field. And if you hit the Altel sign, it brings you back to the app. And when you do get this, you will have to like register, sign up with Altel and just like register your account and uh, you can name your drone and register your drone to your email and stuff like that, I guess, for when you need help. And that about covers it for the unboxing and the inspection. Stay tuned for the next episode because we're going to be going out in the field. And from that point on, we're going to be going in depth with the Alto Evo. Um, I apologize if it was long. I was just trying to be detailed. But I do hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions at all, feel free to comment. And I will answer as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.